Celia Fishman, and welcome to CTSS Live. Today is the 24th of November. It's two days before Thanksgiving, and I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. This is a crazy year, so don't be crazy. Do not go visit your relatives. You don't want to visit them in the good times. Why would you want to visit them in the bad times? You don't want to get sick vaccine is coming. Those of you who work in hospital settings, which most of you do, I'll predict the vaccine will be available to us by the end of December. Then you add 28 days. You know, we could be immune. The, if Pfizer's CEO said that if they use all the different vaccines from Pfizer, Moderna, and everybody else, potentially herd immunity can be done by May or June, which means we may be in business. I'm not saying next summer, but I'm saying we could be almost back to normal this time next year. That would be our goal. I think if we can do things by late summer, early fall, or surely by this time next year. I think um, here's a Peabody and Sherman. If I had a choice, I would ask Mr. Peabody to take me on the time machine and go anywhere but 2020. 2020 has just not been a good year. Many of you, many of you, many of us in academics always would complain about the RSNA around this time of the year. You would say, oh my God, RSNA is coming. You'd be preparing this, that, and the other. And you say, oh, this is crap. You know, I'm screwing up my Thanksgiving holiday. Most people honestly want to get away from the holiday anyway. Want to get away from the family anyway, because by Thursday, Friday, Saturday is a good time to leave. Then we'd be there. This year, we're going nowhere. The RSNA program is not even out. There's a few talks. Most are recorded. I had four refresher courses. We had cinematic basic, cinematic advanced. We had the thing on CTA of the kidneys and arteries, arteries. And we had something else about uh, CTA. And I think I was speaking about pitfalls. Some excellent talks. Now we recorded them all, they're online. I don't know where they're gonna be, but you can watch them. But I promise you, kind of like Eric Clapton, you wanna see me, you wanna see me in concert. <laughs> you don't wanna just see me listening. <laughs> sounds extremely obnoxious but why not but I'm much better live I mean like here it's you know what, what a personality but in all seriousness I don't care how well RSNA does things and I'm sure they'll do it really well and they surely have tried really hard there is nothing like being at a meeting I think seeing your friends uh, seeing other people seeing equipment seeing Chicago seeing whatever you like to see just seeing the crowds of people, the fact you've seen a few people, you're seeing nobody now, which is the right thing to do. Um, you know, so RSNA, I'll predict that RSNA 2021, not this RSNA 2021, is next year, is not going to happen in person because I'm hopefully that we'll be able to go around, but I don't think the first place people are going to go to would be a meeting of 30 or 40 or 50 or 60,000 people. So, I'll predict the likelihood is RSNA 2021 is going to be remote. Almost every it's just not going to happen. I mean, let's be honest. I think that um, I would predict that the first meetings I'll go to, and even for ourselves, we run courses for 37 years. We're not doing it this year, but I think uh, the first meeting will probably run. If it was a miracle, it would be Disneyland, February President's Weekend 2022. I think that's doable. I think potentially that's doable. Uh, but I think big meetings, RSNA 2022 will be in Chicago. I I'll predict if all goes well and there's no new issues, I think that will happen. But I see Lori Hines. Hey, Lori, who's down in Miami or Fort Lauderdale, um, is uh, from uh, agreeing 100%. I, I think that uh, there's, I wonder who the first society, whether it's cardiology, radiology, AMA, Who's going to run the first big meeting? Even Apple or Google or Facebook. The first person to run the meeting is going to have tremendous chutzpah because meetings need to be prepared. But even if you just said, "Okay, everyone, let's show up," I think people are going to be scared to run a big move, to run a big meeting. I think what you'll see in the beginning is some of the smaller meetings, 100, 200 people. Things are a little bit more controlled. I think you're going to feel really creepy going into a meeting with 50,000 of your closest friends, but. Uh, I think we need to worry about that next year. This year, nothing's happening. So um, I think the good news, and I think you know, you're know, you gonna see, like I know myself, I post to speak at a meeting, um, 
the CME course in Orlando right after RSNA, which I've done for many years. It's a wonderful meeting. The group out of Charlotte has done that terrific meeting. We have, I finished recording it today. Hopefully their meeting could happen next December in live. I think they're still having it live. Some people will be there. But most of it is going to be recorded. Many of us can't go or wouldn't think about going, which is the right, you know, which is the right thing to do perhaps at this time for most people. I think that um, over the next year, most of the meetings, I've, I've lectured a few meetings, the UCSD course, I've lectured at the, the course for ESI, but those meetings were planned and they happened and they were done remotely. I think nobody prospectively is planning any meetings until there's more clarity. So that's why I think maybe the end of 2021, but likely 2022 is where you're going to see meetings. But we are writing articles, we're talking, we're doing Facebook Live, we have record attendance even with Facebook messing around with the numbers. Uh, so we are trying to bring you lots of really good information. Um, you know, I've been to RSNA for I think 36 years in a row, so it's kind of like like migration of the birds, but um, this year I'll be home and uh, I'll be working just like the rest of you. So hopefully it'll be better next year. Um, in terms of other things, I think that this year will be a challenge for all of us coming up. I think the next few months are going to be a real challenge as the vaccine comes into play. That should give you hope that things are going to get better. But I think people need to behave. I think it's going to be really hard. I do know a lot of people who are going away Thanksgiving have decided not to. I think that's a really good thing. But I'm not sure people are going to be able to not go away during Christmas, New Year's break, that winter break. And my concern is that come January, mid, mid late January, February, you could have really high numbers with COVID. So I think you're going to have to really resist or be exceedingly careful with whatever you're doing. And that's my advice and my recommendation and my hope for all of us. Because hospitals are getting more crowded. We're not too bad at Hopkins, so it's increasing rapidly. And you read many of the places, Iowa, North Dakota, all the places that did not have a problem the first time, having massive problems. And I think people are wearing out, whether you're physicians, or you're working for Amazon, or you're unemployed and you're staying home. I think we're going closer to the 10th month. I think people, um, you know, even the bears come out from hibernation in about eight or nine months. I think we've been hibernating. I think it's kind of a problem. So let's see, we got a bunch of hellos. We got from Isam Alamin, hope I didn't pronounce it wrong, from the Sudan. So that's, I think he wins the record for being the furthest person away and welcome. And then Lori Hines, I mentioned, unless uh, Lori's traveling, she's down in Florida. And Jay Jamie is in Jayhawk, which means he's at Hopkins in the outpatient center. And John Biakino, who is usually home on Tuesdays, John is home in, uh, in Timonium. So, hey, John. Um, so I think um, other things to, to comment on, we are working as, as we wind down the year, we're working on new things. I just finished doing the last few lectures. Um, which, which give us all of our talks through mid-January. I'm working on the quizzes, so I'm doing that. So we're getting new quizzes. We want to thank everybody. I think Sarah, Lily, myself, want to thank everybody who voted for us uh, for uh, App of the Year on uh, AM Mini. So we want our 12th AM Mini, our fourth out of eight for best App of the Year. And I think that's three in a row, so or two in a row. So we're very excited about that. We really... Uh, Appreciate everybody's support, and we're working on new apps. We're working on redoing some of our apps. I'm working with some people that we're going to even make them better than ever. We're working on redoing our Spine app. We're also making it easier. Lily's been working on a system now that Apple provides where you don't need separate apps for your iPhone and your iPad. So we've done, like, for example, iQuiz, iLectures. We make a version for the iPad and a version for the iPhone. Now will be one version. You just download one thing. The versions were always the same. So maybe for the user, it was just at times confusing. If you downloaded the phone on the iPad, it wouldn't look as pretty. So now it's automatic. Everything will go and look correctly wherever wherever it sits. So I think that part's very exciting. Um, some people ask me, what do, what do I expect to see at the RSNA? I think that uh, if you go to some of the, uh, the RSNA is going to have some way of connecting with some of the companies, the Siemens and GEs of, of the world. And I think they will be showing, uh, I think the individual sites will be showing some of their new technology. 
I think you might see some new scanners or scanner upgrades. I think you're going to see a lot of stuff with packs. I think you're going to see a lots and lots of stuff at AI, whether it's companies like NVIDIA or smaller companies like Zebra and AI Doc. You're going to see a lot of stuff there. Um, again, it's not kind of the same as walking downstairs and let me roam around and see what I can see. So it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. But I guess you don't have to fly and you don't have to stay in a hotel and take the bus and all those good things, which may have been the things you like best. I think for many of the senior people, more senior people, I don't mean senior citizens, I mean people who've been involved with the RSNA for, or have been in radiology for more than 10 or 15 years, one of the things that was really great about the RSNA would be seeing your friends. That you would see a lot of people from all over who you train with, who people you're friends with. There's none of that. Uh, you know, if you want to speak to people, pick up the phone. I spoke with Brooke Jeffrey. I spoke with Mike Federley. It's two of my closest friends in terms of academics. Just got to pick up the phone. I think perhaps this year, more than ever, you're not going to be running into anybody accidentally. So if you really want to speak to someone, just pick up the phone. Now, I don't want to seem like an AT&T commercial, a Verizon commercial, but if you want to say hello, whether it's Thanksgiving or it's Thanksgiving Friday, it's Black Friday, it's Good Thursday, it's early Wednesday, it's late Saturday, just pick up the phone. And I'm sure those people will be here. We'll be happy to hear from you. I think everybody is a little bit worn out. I've spoken to all my faculty. People are doing well, but doing well is a uh, is a relative term. I think no one is doing great. No one wa is doing what they want to be doing right now. And I think that as you move forward, as you look forward, it'll be a little bit harder. But I really believe once you get the vaccine or the vaccine is being uh, introduced, whether it's Moderma, whether it's Pfizer, whether it becomes AstraZeneca, I think there you're going to see a lot more hope. And then once people can start going out safely and restaurants open, you can go to the movies, you can go to the store. I don't know when it's going to be that you don't have to wear a mask. Remember, until more people get immunized, till 70% of the people at least, so you have herd immunity, you're still going to have to worry because if you are vaccinated and you theoretically can't get the disease, you can still be a carrier. So it's not quite as simple as... Uh, I got the vaccine, let's party. So it's a little bit tricky in that regard, but I think um, we're getting there. Now, if anyone has any questions, this might be a good time to ask questions. Um, in, in thinking also of uh, just some of the, the technology challenges, it'll be interesting in the coming year as things get potentially, hopefully back more to normal, will people be reading from home? You know, people talk about, oh, I like being from home. I think academics, you could do a little bit from home, like taking call. But I think the reality is if you want to do academics, you got to be at work. you got to be sitting at conference. I just finished Pancreas at a conference 11 to 12. We saw all the patients. We looked at the films. We discussed. We managed. Patient care is not suffering. But the reality is we don't see each other. We don't have conversations with each other. Uh, research suffers. I think just the, the fun factor. You're doing a lot of things. I did Pancreatic Conference, but in no way is it as much fun as sitting there and saying hi to people before or hi to people after. It's not that little uh, tuna sandwich you get for free. Well, I think we stopped getting it for free anyway, but it's not the tuna sandwich that makes a difference. It's the personal interaction. And I think people are going to really, really... Um, think about that, that uh, the personal interactions become very critical. And um, now, of course, I, I've, I know from my grandchildren and my, my children, if the vaccine comes and everything gets back to normal, no one's going to want to be working, right? Everyone is going to be wanting to go on vacation. They miss the year of vacation. It's going to be impossible to get a hotel room, an airline flight, doing anything. It's going to be a madhouse. You won't be able to get a dinner reservation. So now you got to think, should I make reservations for the Grand Caymans next December on the hope that'll be back to normal? That is a really good question. And uh, who knows, who knows what the answer will be. But um, I think I'm very positive that things will, will, be, will be much better. So we're hopeful. I think on Thanksgiving, we need to, um, however you celebrate Thanksgiving, it's probably a good time to give thanks to everything that was good. Things could have been worse. We're still not out of the woods yet, but I think there's hope. 
Just think for a second, what if Pfizer and Moderna's vaccine came back 10% successful that it was basically injecting you with water, that it was a waste of time? Then you could see the scariness of it all. The presidential election, whoever you liked or disliked, is over, right? We have a new administration. They seem to be picking responsible people. Uh, we need to move on. I think that's a good thing. I think Trump will leave the White House. Uh, he didn't like the neighborhood anyway. He has a much nicer house in Florida. He'll be able to play more golf. So I don't think he's going to be too upset with it all. Um, he will be around. I'm sure he likes the publicity. So whether he has a new show like The Apprentice, and he'll call it The, the White House, and then he'll be firing the secretaries of state and all sorts of people, one never knows. Uh, it could be very, very entertaining. And I think, he, you know, he'll be, uh, he's not going to be uh, losing, uh, losing too much sleep over it all. So uh, I don't see any questions, so I'll, I'll just end here, and I'll just say that I wish everybody happy and healthy Thanksgiving. We'll be back next week. Um, today's Tuesday. It was a little bit unusual for us to do it because uh, Lily and Sarah told me not to do it on Thursday, which is when we typically do this at uh, 12 o'clock on Thursday. So we'll be back next Thursday. Any good ideas, any suggestions, um, let me know. But if not, um, have a you know, have a good time. Be careful. Watch TV. Watch cartoons. Do anything you want to do, but don't go see people. You know, just chill. And with that, Lori Hines says, Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Lori, I won't see you at RSNA this year. Lori works for Siemens, and I always would stop by the Siemens booth as she was one of the apps people giving demos and giving a good demo. But, um, Lori, who was at Hopkins way back when, probably a decade ago, wish her and her family and everybody else at all the techs. Um, B. Mudge, who usually is online, I don't see B, but John and all our techs at Hopkins, we wish them only the best and to be safe. And with that, we'll see you next week. Happy holidays.